the girl that I was on a date with chucks the ex like onto the steps and she's like got her in a neck hold and the ex is just like oh yeah you like this don't you and I'm like oh this has turned into like a weird sexual tension <laughs> You're here, you're with us, and we are with the best band in the world? Mm, possibly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in the it's universe, funny. perhaps? <laughs> we got Could Courtney, be. we got Zoe, we got Hillary from the Buoys. Wow, guys, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> do, you ever, do you ever get the that? Buoys. Really? Only, only with Americans. Oh. Uh. But sometimes you do have to say it to differentiate yourself from B-O-Y-S. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I no, we are here. Lads, like, you know. We're with <laughs> well, the boys, we we're with the lads. Joining us on our first ever episode of DNM. And it's a complete sausage fest. I yeah. <laughs> we want to get into it. I um I read somewhere that you sort of described the band Zoe as forming through a number of failed blind dates, or maybe successful blind dates. Yeah. How did that, you know, how did they actually pan out individually with so, each of the members? Blind dates loosely, right? So because I didn't back when I started the band in Cronulla, I didn't know anyone that I was able to play with. And so my friend had posted a status saying, you know, we, meet, we need more women on stage in Canola. I was like, damn straight. So he set me up on like a blind date with his cousins. He just gave me an address and a time. I rocked up and we played some of my music. We played a jet cover. <laughs> Are you gonna be my girl, obviously? Yeah. Um, and then that was that. And then that kind of boys came to an end. And then the, the new iteration of the boys also came from a date. This one was a Tinder date and I just like wouldn't shut up about how I wanted to like start my band back up. And I'd pestered this, this person for ages because he, he had the audacity to mention that his cousin drummed. And so I like hooked on and I was like, this has to happen. And that was Tess. So he gave me her number and we met up. And then everything else, mutual friends and meetings. The rest was history. Heaps of dates, yeah. Has that ever been, um, has that ever led to any like interesting situations having a number of queer members in the band, all having lots of mutual friends, being in the same city. Has has any um have have there ever had to be any awkward conversations? Ooh, <clears throat> I don't think so. But I definitely shied away from going near anyone in the music industry for ages, which is really funny because my partner is a percussionist. Yeah. <laughs> so, so now it feels quite enmeshed in a lot of ways. But no, I don't Not think with so other. within us in no. the, in the band. All hey. four of us are so different. Like, yeah. You've never had to be like, oh, I'm writing this song about this person. And then someone else is like, what's that? What's, what's that, that about? Name? Wait, <laughs> they took you to Witch Beach? <laughs> <laughs> no, we've never had that. No. Yeah. We're crazy. It's probably why we're still together. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. <laughs> Holy on, yeah. Well, Courtney, we've heard a, a shocking story about exes reuniting. <laughs> oh, God. What's the... Uh, What's the little story? Yeah, a bit of a that? worse date than maybe It was the... so bad. Okay, so first date, all good. Had a little make-out session, all that stuff. Let's go to girl thing. I'm like, cool, 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 go to girl thing, which is just like a girl's nightclub vibe. And um, I was there with my friend as well. And night's going well. All of a sudden, the ex turns up. And I was just like, I don't know who you are. I'm going to suss you for a while. She full comes up to me and she's like... So how are you doing? And she was like six foot two or something. And I'm just there like, oh, this is awkward already. Great. And she, my, the, the girl that I was with is staring at her, just kind of like doing one of these and being like all cutie. And I was like, oh, is this going to be one of those nights? <laughs> oh, no. The night's going on and I can see the ex staring at us from afar. And I'm like, mm, I don't know vibe with this. Anyway, gets to later in the night. We go outside, everyone's having a ciggy and all this stuff and we're chatting and whatever. The ex comes back around again, outside, standing there. They both get up and they're just facing one another. It's like two minutes of standing there and I'm just like, is this about to turn as like a full gay war battle? <laughs> and I, all of a sudden... Did you sing it out? Oh, no, it was not that at all. It was the complete opposite. All of a sudden, the two of them just went at each other, like, <gasps> hands on necks and everything. And I'm just like, I don't know what to do. Like, what am I supposed to do right now? Like, I'm on a date with you, but you're fighting with your ex, so I'm screwed. Yeah. Oh. And all of a sudden, like, the girl that I was on a date with chucks the ex, like, onto the steps. And she's like, got her in a neck hold. And the ex is just like, oh, yeah, you like this, don't you? And I'm like, oh, this has turned into, like, a weird sexual tension <laughs> fight vibe. And I just stood up and I was like, I need to just leave. I just need to leave. I'm like, worst case scenario, 
I get punched out by the ex. Mm. <laughs> Even worse, I get punched out by both of them. Yeah. My date and the ex. I'm like, I ain't got time for this. I'm out. Is Sorry. It was horrible. Anyway, I walk off and that all calms down. She runs after me. She goes, what's wrong? And I was just like, seriously? <laughs> what's wrong? I'm like, you just had a weird sexual tension Maybe. choking fight with your ex. Yeah, I would I just put in gay in Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> like, gay of Thrones here. <laughs> I don't know. And um, I was just like, I'm gonna go, honey. Like, I, I, you just, there's clearly some stuff going on with y'all and I'm just gonna let you figure that out. Yeah. And she was just like, well, if you wanna be with me, you're just gonna have to deal with the drama. And I was like, I'm too old for this. I'm yeah. out of here, I'm gone. And literally two months, maybe three months later, go on Instagram, they're back together. No. And I was like, it's all good. Oh my God. So then were you able to, I guess like, turn that into any inspiration for music or you were like that's out of my brain i cannot think of this <laughs> we need remove to that remove that it's just case. removed completely yeah. removed never going to girl thing again you will never see me a girl thing ever again I unfortunately feel like I have enough content to write some lyrics on <sighs> i feel like you'll make a good song out of that yeah i mean if a song was to come from a situation like that yeah, title yeah. <laughs> well, so we will come up with something yeah i was gonna say word. like punchy punch me or <laughs> and it's just like a really punk song. Like, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> not naming names, but yeah. Yeah, well, if um, your next hit song comes from, you know, is, is Punchy Punch Me. Mm. Oh, you've heard it here first. You're gonna know. Over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it could soundtrack the next time that you're going at your ex's throat. <laughs> <laughs> it happens, it happens to all of us. Now look, that is, um, that's, that's maybe not, um, not the most like wholesome queer story <laughs> in your repertoire. Um, but, I, but I know that each of you have very different sort of coming out stories. And Zoe, you described yours as a bit anticlimactic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could you like describe it a little bit? And then also, I, I feel like that's a really interesting way to phrase it because I think a lot of us feel like it's going to be this, like build it up to this big dramatic thing. And then a part of you might, might be a little bit disappointed when it's not. Because that, that's exactly little... right. I feel like it was something that I had been keeping to myself for so long. And so when I had finally become comfortable enough to share it, I was like, great, like this is really exciting and I get to tell people. Um, I mean, it was really wholesome with my sister and my niece. She's the same age as me. She's not, she's not a tiny tot. Um, like, you know, happy tears and like, oh, so happy for you. And like, but also the, uh, yeah, obviously. Um, <laughs> and I have this really awful uh, thing with my brain that if I tell like one or two people I feel like I've told everyone so I didn't actually really properly come out to my mum who's probably like they've got to be the most important person in my life I just we she would we would, I was talking about who I was dating and using she her pronouns and just didn't even click in my head that I hadn't had a discussion with her about it I was really excited to tell her and it was just like that was it I was expecting it to be this big like mum <laughs> like, I want to tell you. And it was just, yeah. yeah. Um, and then, yeah, same with like, I felt like when I was telling all my friends, it was like, big news, guys. And they're like, Zoe, it's okay. <laughs> we knew. Oh. <laughs> like, okay. And you're like, good and bad. <laughs> yeah. mm, it's sort of like a backhanded compliment. People were like, yeah, we knew. Yeah. And you're like, okay, don't <laughs> take the moment away from me. Yeah, this is my moment. <laughs> How about it's super hard to share that if in for a lot of people. So like that's mm. the bit that should be celebrated, I think. Yeah. yeah. Do you, what are your general outlooks, I guess, with with coming out? Because it, it, it's a different perspective for a lot of people in the community. I myself look at it as something where it is an absolute privilege for people in my life to get to know that part of me. And there's this um, long history of like the lead up to coming out being this big sort of theatrical thing that you do to your parents and your loved ones. Do you have a certain outlook or like if you were sending out a message to someone who was who was coming out, what would that look like? Um, so for me, it was a it was a trickle over time and it, and it, and it kind of went like this of just getting more comfortable in myself. But my message to anyone would be whether you want it to be something that happens gradually or happens in a big bang that you put yourself first mm. yeah. and try and like, yeah, 
other people's opinions or reactions are irrelevant, even though I just said I wanted them to celebrate my decision more. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of that, it's like I'm still with myself and with being so stoked that I discovered that part of myself. So yeah. just remember that. Yeah. And yeah, you, were, you had said that joining the band was like a big part of yeah, sort of it's like, real special for me. Yeah, yeah. talk about that. Oh, I'm probably going to tear up. Yay! I was going, yay! Yeah. <laughs> cry, 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 cry. Close um, up here, please. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. um, uh, yeah, sorry, I did write that in my, in my notes to you, but I actually, for whatever reason, didn't expect to talk about it. Um, yeah, I grew up in a country town. Oh. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is queer sisterhood, people. That's what we got here. Wow, this is wild. Um, but yeah, it was pretty late to coming out, you know. No one was really out in my high school or anything like that. Um, actually, a lot of people that I was friends with at school are now out and queer and happy, which I think is a pretty common common story, you know. Um, far out, this is so funny. Um, but yeah, being in the boys was one of the first first spaces where I felt safe to be out, you know, um, like I wouldn't be rejected or anything like that. Um, and you know, my family are, they're super cool, they're super loving. When I told them, they were so supportive. Um, but I think, yeah, growing up where I grew up was, you know, during a time where the word gay was such a pejorative, you know, all oh, that, that party was so gay is not a cool thing, I think. Yeah. So the boys, <laughs> It was a really safe space for me. Yeah, the boys. Mm. Yeah, the boys. <laughs> wow. I can't believe I'm crying about I this. love you, you know? so much. Oh. You're fucking making me cry. Oh. I don't know any of this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel it too, because I mean, I, yeah, I grew up in Newcastle, which people try and tell me it's a city. I say, no, it's regional, regional okay? All right, let, let me have this thing. Um, but it, yeah, it's just that visibility, hey, and just like being in community. I remember like Mardi Gras was such a huge thing for me, just like, standing at the parade and I wasn't out to anyone and like seeing these people just being like oh my god that's like an option like that's there mm. yeah mm. for sure and like you know my parents have queer friends and stuff so it's it's kind of weird um so their messaging within my family was like you know be who you want to be love whoever you want to love like you know this is safe but um yeah for whatever reason I don't know. I think you were all just so chill. You were just like, oh, who are you dating? Or who are you into? And it was just like as if it wouldn't be a possibility that it was, you know, was going to be a woman or someone yeah. non-binary or trans. Like it was just like that that possibility was just a given, I think, it was really exciting for me. So, <laughs> Was there a moment in time throughout this time in the boys that you turned around and were like, gee, this is... This is great. Oh yeah, it happens all the time still, I think. You know, we see people at our gigs hooking up in crowds or, or mm. just being excited and people telling Courtney that they, you know, love Courtney and it's just um it's like it's just like <laughs> literally it's no, always it's, honestly, it's always we're, we're, Courtney marry me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um yes, wow. <laughs> and to to be in a space where you're performing on stage where people feel safe to like you know, profess their love to Courtney, which is something that I understand. Um, I love you, Courtney. <laughs> I don't understand it, don't uh, worry. I don't get but, it either. You know, that's why you get it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but that's like, that's pretty special. I don't think 12 year old me would have ever envisaged mm. doing that. So, no, absolutely. And look, Courtney, next to you is Arlo Parks, mm. who isn't there by accident. We know that Arlo's a bit of an icon for you. Why, why, why Arlo? What do, what do you love? Not only is her songwriting, her live show, her just, I don't know, I, she's like such a genuine natured person. I, I, I would love to just meet her and talk to her because I feel like she'd be so beautiful to speak to. But it's, it's also for me like such an amazing thing to see queer, brown and black women really just like taking over the world yes. like in such an amazing way and she speaks her truth and she's an adv advocate for so many different things that are important to me as well and I just it's just awesome to see a bi black woman with so much power just get up there and just do it and I just have so much respect for her I think she's an absolute genius so yeah absolutely 
Yeah, and Amina. couple goals with Ash Nico as well. Yeah. I know. What a vibe. <laughs> Every time I see those Instagram posts, oh. I'm like, all right, you two. The carousels, honestly. I know. It's a, bit, it's a bit much. Do we have like a celebrity crush? Is there like a. That's, that's literally. I mean, Arlo Parks that, has to be up there. Arlo yeah. Parks? Yeah. Collectively. Cele we're talking celebrity crushes. Yeah. Taylor Swift, Phoebe Bridges, Emma Stone. Diversity. We love to see it. <laughs> Tyron's made that his unofficial catchphrase. Yeah, it's um, true. <laughs> and look, this whole this whole show is um, all thanks to you know World Pride happening in Sydney. It's a big old big old party. Um, parties for you three. Who would you say you are at the party? Like at any given party, what's the sort of character? Are you the one like on the D floor? Are you the one outside like having a goss? D floor. D floor. I'm the one that'll get the dip, like Courtney's actual full circle floor. going, yeah. and then, yeah. then, then then that's it. You're in. I'm usually the one throwing it. Yeah. Yeah. The organizer. <laughs> uh, when you said Someone throwing has to do it. it. I thought you were, I'm throwing it up. Okay, that's a lead straw. <laughs> like, <laughs> I love a theme and like I won't just stop at the theme. I will write a story attached to the theme to get people in character. Yes. I will go crazy with the decorations. I'm like I love the organizing of the party and then once it gets there I'm just a chiller. Well yeah. <laughs> hosting parties are so hard. It's stressful. Oh I just like turning up. Yeah I don't know. I also love the dance floor. Mm. Uh, but yeah I think I'm actually a D and Emma. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Well, DNMing is exactly what we've been doing here um, on DNM. We've been putting the deep and meaningful into this conversation. <laughs> Courtney, Zoe, and Hilary from the Boys. Hi, Boys. <laughs> Joining us for our first ever episode. And thank you so much Thanks for, for coming having through. us. Yeah. This has been so nice. Always a pleasure, never, never a chore. chore. <laughs> <laughs>